Yo, what's good people? It's Jay Cactus, and in today's video, I'm gonna be remixing a popular song into a drill beat. A few people have requested this one, and honestly, I think it's the wave right now. I'm hearing more and more classics being flipped into drill, and I've seen a lot of them blow up on TikTok and YouTube. I tried it a while back when I remixed Gangsta's Paradise into a drill beat, and that's one of my most viewed beats on my second channel. So I think there's definitely room for producers to grow their channels that way, which is kind of why I wanted to show you my process when I'm remixing something. The song that I'm gonna remix today is Cry Me A River by Justin Timberlake. I think it's one of the most popular songs of all time and I can definitely hear drill drums over it. I think the BPM is pretty close as well, so this is going to be a good one to flip. So let's get straight into it. All right, cool. So I've downloaded the song that I want to flip. Like I said, it's Justin Timberlake, Cry Me A River. And the first thing that I need to do is work out the BPM and the key. I always just like to start off by knowing those things. There's a few ways you can work out your BPM. One is just to play it and then tap the tempo. I don't really want to play the sample just because it will instantly get a copyright claim. But what you do is right click on the BPM, click on tap. And then when you play it, you just want to tap along to the beats. But maybe I could show you with one of my other beats just so you know what I'm doing. Right, so, so you can roughly get it from there and then you just want to fine tune it and then line it up on the grid. If they're not perfectly on grid, it could mean that there's a little gap at the beginning, which most songs do, including this one. Look, so I've just hit C to activate the slice tool. I'm holding Alt to temporarily disable the snap to grid and then Shift to cut in a straight line. And then it's right click just to cut the smallest end. And then P for the select tool and then I can bring that back. So this beat should be on grid now. Yeah. So that's the process for working out the BPM. So I'm just gonna do it to the main track, Crammy River. For these popular songs, you wouldn't really even have to do that. You could just Google it. So look, I've gone into TuneBat. It's showing up as A flat minor 74 BPM. I got 148, which is the same because we're working in double time. The bit that I want to take from the sample is just the intro, just this section here. There's what sounds like a Rhodes piano playing the main chords. There's some rain for a bit of texture and there's a small vocal sample in there as well. I don't really want to take the bit with the drums right now just because I think there's too much going on. But if you did want to flip something like that, I've done a video before on how to remove drums from samples. So I'll leave a link to that in the description. I'm literally just going to take this bit here. First thing that I usually do is just clean it up. So almost all the time, in fact, I'd literally say all the time, I'd remove some of the bass. So I know my bass is going to fit in there. And you can hear there's a lot of high end because of the rain in the sample, which I kind of like, but I think it's going to be too much once I have my counter snares and everything else over it. So I'm going to remove some high end too. About there for now. Just to keep it clean, I'm going to open another EQ because I really want to take some of that rain out. So I'm going to bring this to a notch curve. I've just dragged this down here, make it a little bit wider. And this is basically going to remove the frequencies that I want. That I can use as a bit of background texture. If I really wanted to, I could cut some more off. Yeah, that might be actually. I'm gonna leave this as it is for now, just because the idea that I had was to remake the counter melody. In the original sample, I think the counter melody is some kind of synth, but I wanna use strings instead and make it a little bit more orchestral sounding. So now that I've got the sample where I want it to be, I'm just gonna right click here and click consolidate this track. I do it this way because now we've just got this as its own sample, whereas this is the full song. So it's gonna be easier if I wanna flip it later, cause look, if I reverse it, it's just gonna reverse this. If I reverse this, it's gonna reverse the whole song. I'm sure everyone recognizes that melody. All right, so I've got the counter melody, but like I said, I want to swap that for some kind of stringed instrument. Yeah, I think that's going to work for now, but I don't want it so on grid. I think it sounds unnatural. So I'm just going to manually move some of the notes. And then I'm going to press Ctrl and A, Shift and click to copy them. And then Ctrl and down to bring them down an octave. And I'll bring the velocity of these down a little bit. And just randomize these a little bit differently. Yeah, 
I think that's sounding a lot more natural now. I think I can find a better instrument though. I'm thinking maybe a viola instead. Yeah, I think that blends a bit nicer. Um, what I'm gonna do is create an instrument boss here. Usually what I do is send everything to the same boss so I don't have to apply reverb on every individual channel. Again, I wanna make sure that everything sounds cohesive, like everything's in the same room. So if I apply reverb to the instrument boss, it's gonna apply it to everything. I think some delay would fit on the viola though. All right, so I've got a sample so far in the viola. Maybe I could just copy the viola, same pattern and everything, and then just pan the viola to the right and then maybe a violin to the left. All right, so I'm liking the way it sounds so far. But one thing that I did want to add to this though is a guitar version of the sample. When I was searching for the original, I found a guitar version, like a remake from James Bartholomew, and I thought that it sounded sick. So I'm going to see what it sounds like underneath this. Love the way this guitar sounds. So same thing, let's bring this back to start off with. The guitar's played in the same key as the original, so I need to bring this down 200 cents to match the other one. And you can see this one's at a different BPM. So in order to fix that, I need to double click in it. Make sure that this is set to stretch, otherwise it's gonna mess everything up. Make sure this is on stretch mode, and then I can hold Alt, click and drag until it's on the lines. I'm just gonna cut it by each beat here and then I can manually move each one. When you're chopping up samples though, I always turn on generic bleeding because that's gonna create like a quick fade out at the end to stop any clicks and pops. They don't need to be perfect, keeping it natural. All right, so what I'm thinking so far is I don't want the violins and the violas playing all the way through. I just want them in one section, but I definitely want to add my whole melody at some point. So I'm thinking I'm going to add a piano for now. I might change the instrument further down the line, but I just want to get some kind of melody in. So when it comes to adding the eight weight, the first thing that I wanna do is figure out the progression of the sample. I think this is something that a lot of producers struggle with and it took me some time to train my ears to do it, but the easiest way to do it is to listen to the sample and try and follow where the progression goes. So it's starting on the root note. So it's going. So we know it's coming down. I think it's C sharp. Yeah. I think it's coming up to D then. And then coming back down. I think down to B. Yeah. So that's the progression. But I'm going to switch up that 808 to something like. Let's go with this one.
right, cool. I think I've got the eight weight pattern. I know I didn't explain much when I was doing it. I just didn't want to get out of the flow. But basically, I just started with the root notes like I showed you earlier. And then everything else, I just kind of go by ear. I see what sounds good leading into the next note. And then when it comes to the actual slides, sometimes I keep it on quarter step. Sometimes I keep it on like half step. But most of the time, I'll just hold alt, click and drag. Just so it's a little bit more free sounding and I've got some variation. Like I don't even have all of them starting on grid either. Like this note's going to hit here. And then when it gets to this note, it's going to slide up. But this is what I've got so far. Alright cool, so I've added this main counter snare and then I've just added another counter snare with a slightly different tone just to act as some accent notes and then just for some variation towards the end. And I might add one more just to act as some more accent notes. Alright cool, so I've got most of the drums down. I'm thinking it still needs a couple of effects though. So I'm gonna get a riser in there. Of course you already know it's the perfect transition one. And what I usually do with my riser is just cut it for like a bar. I could have just shortened the whole thing but it still works because I can set this to generic and it's still got that slow fade in. It might even fit better here though. And then I can add this camera flash, trying to get this to be my signature sound. Let's see what this sounds like reverse though. Yeah, it actually sounds sick. I'm just gonna see what it's like with the BPM down a little bit. If you're changing the BPM, just make sure that your samples are set to stretch, otherwise it's just gonna make it out of time. So I'm gonna set all of these to stretch. Everything else is MIDI, so it should be fine. So now when you change the BPM, it just stretches everything for you. Let's try maybe 144. 145. I think 145 because it's still energetic, but I felt like 148 was just a little bit too fast. Actually, I'm going to bring that camera flash back here. I think there's a lot going on here, and then maybe I can have some kind of perkits at the end instead. All 
right, cool. I think that's enough drums for now. I ended up taking out a couple of the perkits because I felt like it was just getting too much. But one thing that I want to try now is just flipping the sample that I've got. So I'm just going to render out all of the instruments apart from, um, I think, the viola and violin and then see if there's something else I can do with it. I like the sound of this here. Maybe I could take this. I just repeat that. I might switch up the progression, but I can figure it out. All right, cool. I like the chop that I've done there. It just gives it a little bit of variation. I'm not really sure where I'm going to use it yet. It might just be some kind of bridge, even an intro, but I'll figure it out when I start arranging it. So yeah, I'm just going to finish mixing it. I'll arrange everything as always and then show you the outcome. All right, so I finished mixing and arranging the beat and yo, I must be the most indecisive person ever. I should take like 30 minutes to make a beat, but I think this took about three hours and a half. Let me check. Yeah, look, three hours and 52 minutes. Obviously, I'm talking my way through stuff, so that usually takes a little bit longer. But most of it comes down to being indecisive. I keep adding things, swapping it out. And yeah, I'm just long with it. But anyway, I think the outcome's sick, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to play it from the beginning and then talk you through it all. So in the intro, I just left the main melody. And I made the intro quite long because I just had plans to release as an instrumental. I didn't really have an artist of mine on it. And then I added a synth bass and filtered the counter snare. The count melody is down off to two. So these strings are new that I added. Then the guitar comes in. I did actually bring this down an octave just because I felt like it would have been too would have been the same all the way through and back to the hook so I felt like the hook just needed those strings to separate it I didn't end up using that reverse section until the outro, so I just finished it like this. So it's back down octave, like the bridge, but then it transitions into this. Just as a little switch up. And then that just fades out. So I hope you liked the video and I hope you're feeling the beat. And if you ever want to listen to the full version of my beats, I upload them all to my other channel, which is just J Cactus Beats. If you've got any other suggestions for remixes, then let me know in the comments because I definitely want to start flipping more classics. But yeah, I appreciate you all for watching once again and I'll see you next time.
Jay Cox.